we'll take just a moment to connect with an intention for our class today. With us being so close to Valentine's Day, um, we could easily focus externally, like what Valentine's is all about. But today, we're focusing more internally. It's like Valentine's self-care, self-love. It's like we're treating ourselves like we're a goddess. We're one of the most important things. It's, it's like my mom always had this quote. Um, it's like, ain't mama happy, ain't nobody happy. <laughs> So it's like that, where if we really feed ourselves energy, love, self-care, stretching, all sorts of good things, then we can turn around and everybody else can be happy too. It, it just kind of ripples outward. So that's our idea today. It's just self-care, self-love, just indulging in the beautiful stretches, the chance to be alive, the chance to be moving. So let's take some nice initial stretches with that idea in our mind. We're stretching the arms to the back wall. We're allowing shoulders to wiggle to the right. And shoulders to the left. Take it another two times to each side. A nice exhale when you're leaning over. Inhale to straighten back out. Back aligned, take your right knee into the chest. I'll get a nice and tight, like we're trying to allow the hip flexors to get a little bit of compression. You'll notice that's part of what we're doing today is using different either stretches or the fabric in different ways to give our various parts of our body a massage. So this is kind of like a massage and little compression for the hip flexor. And then let's move into the hamstring. Right leg extends up to sky. Grab onto that leg wherever you can reach. Allow the leg to continue to extend up. Breathe into it. stretch for a couple more breaths so maybe the leg is straightening a little bit more or maybe you're pulling it in a little closer good let's hook this right heel to the back left end of the fabric it's like a pigeon pose because you're hooking your heel all the way to the back end you can peek at the mirror if you're confused at all Right here, just allow that hip to open up. Take one more good inhale. One, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Good, start to free out this leg, let it drop all the way down. And left knee comes in, start with hugging that knee in so tight that you feel the front of the hip flexor with a little bit of compression. I even imagine I'm hugging the thigh into the intestines so the very intestines get a little bit of a massage. Good. The leg starts to extend up to sky. And keep on extending. It's almost like there's no end to this stretch. But there's constant lengthening of the leg. There's constant gentle pulling in. One more inhale. 
Exhale, let's hook the heel. Getting into that hip stretch for this side. Inhale to the back right. Slide the shin in as much as there's flexibility and comfort for the knee. slides down past the armpit into the waist. You're welcome to re-hook the hands onto the back end if you take a back bend. The head hang backwards. The grip staying there makes it a bit easier. Letting go of the hands makes it a bit deeper in the back. So we choose how to do the back bend. Feels appropriate today. And let the head rotate a little bit, getting into neck loosening. A grip under the back, if you let go, slowly roll the head back up. And we're coming to stretch over the feet in a forward fold. The hips are the heavy points, so the knees naturally bend a little bit. If you want the stretch to go a little deeper, try to extend the legs a little further forward, the heels. Maybe the, the neck rolls over to the right ear to right shoulder. And then slowly left ear to left shoulder. These are some of the spots that chronically hold tension. And so it's nice to take this self-care moment that, you know, I do matter enough. And I do care about myself enough to take time for the neck, for the back, for the hands, the feet, all sorts of things. Okay, let's anchor the right hand on the left foot or leg. And then left hand circles up to sky all the way to the back of the room. Nice twist for the spine. Okay, return that arm all the way back forward. Switch the grip and right arm twist. if you want for the neck, kind of rocking the head left and right or stillness if that's left. Okay, so sitting back up, we're going to head straight into vampire. So leave the legs in, grab onto the fabric that's at the back end and then drape it over your shoulders like a cape. If you know vampire, you're familiar with it, just go into it. If it's your first time, go with me step by step. You can watch if that's better for you, but you're taking just a thin layer over the shoulders. So that way you won't have too much extra on the neck. Your elbows are like little chicken wings and you're using that to help gather some of the excess fabric into your waist. So then you'll lay back and it's just one complete cup sleeve over your shoulders, but not a bunch of excess. Go ahead and lay back. Good. And all that excess that you gathered at, at the waist, we need to take down to the feet. So you'll step the feet in, kind of like a bridge pose. Good. 
We'll fix the bill. Okay, if you want to watch first, then I'll I'll make it through it and I'll okay. tie up. So essentially, I'm gonna then lift my hips up, extend the legs, so that way I took all the excess down to my feet. And then last steps, I just grip up high and pike the feet up, and then pressing the feet into the fabric, I can rise upside down to down. Okay. Those that have done vampire before, by the way, go ahead and take any variations that you like at this moment. It's a self care moment. So yeah, that does look really good. So step the feet in closer. Then as you lift up the hips, you can get the side press down here. So you would just step up with like bent knees. Yep, and then lift up your hips. Yep, that did it. See how that's good come down? So do it again. Good, and one more time. I think we'll get all the excess down. Uh, and maybe one more. Awesome. So then hands grip up high. Feet pick up. Your feet press all the way into this spot. Maybe inside or outside. Further. Yep. And just like pressing and rising and slipping up. Yes, right. So engage your course. Press. Um, you're slipping off of that spot. Let's push your feet. And then just press your feet to engage your core to rise. Keep going, keep going all the way to side up. Lift your hips high. More. I go all the way to the top. Lots of things here. The first time's kind of easy. Yeah. But you're saying you go all the way to the clip. No, you won't flip. You can look at that. I just heard it go on. Thank you. You're welcome. I think you spelled the sweater on too. I don't know. <laughs> oh, gotcha. <laughs> You're like, this is what I got today. <laughs> so my normal rule with inversions, don't feel like you have to stay upside down for a certain amount of time. You're really just listening to your body. When your body wants to come back down, just relax back to the Shavasana. So your head can come in, your legs can come in. Just relax down when you're, when you're there. No rush, we still got some people that stay up. The one thing to point out with Vampire, it's nice because it starts to give a massage to the tops of the shoulders since our body weight is in that spot. So that's the type of massage that we're giving our body in various poses today. So some of the massages will be for the feet, some will be for the low back sacral area. We'll do all sorts of goodies. If ever the massage that the fabric is giving you is too intense, know that you don't have to stay in the pose. You can always pop out. Um, it takes a little while sometimes for the body to get used to that deep massage. So you're still upside down. Maybe take the last couple of breaths. Eventually we'll be heading up to a seated position, but um, take kind of take your time. Basically, when you come up to sitting, you're helping me know that at that point, your body feels good. You're back to flipped um, to the normal arrangement with your blood pressure. Being upside down sometimes takes a little while to flip back around. So eventually sitting up when your body tells you it's, it's all good. And kick the feet out the front when you're up, no rush. Let's just take a little twist before we do anything else. So we're bunching up fabric to the front door of the roof. The right arm shift just to the back wall or circles around the back of the head. So other half of the room. The very half is this. I consider this the upper half. Oh. So bunch up the yep. Yep, that'll work. More inhale, the spine grows a little taller. Exhale, rotate across that tall spine and return back forward. Switch it up, bunch up the fabric to the back door. And then this time, left arm stretches back or circles around the head.
lower inhale. Exhale, rotate maybe a little deeper. Good, return. And we're gonna exit. I like to bunch up the fabric, lift the toes up for a moment, and then we just tilt our way forward to stand. Beautiful. So from here, let's take the fabric under the shoulder blades. Walk back to take all the slack out of the fabric, but then bring the feet back to where they were under the plumb line. I like a nice wide stance. Awesome. So like a huge hula hoop, we're gonna circle all the way around the hips. We're gonna try to stick together so that way we don't bump each other. So we're gonna start our circle to the front door side first. So three, two, one, go. And five, four, let the knees be loose. Three, so rather than spinning around, keep your hips facing forward. Two, you got it, yep, one. And pause at the back. We're gonna go to the back door side and three, two, one, hip circle around like a big hula hoop head. And four, three, two, one, and pause at the back. Straighten the legs, open the arms, taking a slight back bend. One inhale, nice and deep. Exhale. Roll the head back up. We're bending the knees, stepping the right foot back and the left foot forward. It's like a deep lunge shape. Try to straighten the back leg as much as you can and the front knee is bent. Good. I like to slide the hands up, kind of like warrior one position arms, but I'm, I'm kind of hooking myself still under that same spot under the shoulders. Good. So it's just stretching through the psoas area for the right hip. Nice inhale. Exhale. Slide the back foot in just enough that you can plant the back heel down. Grip the hands wide and then circle them forward. So it'd be a spot where we can return again to the second side. You're just sliding it over your head, keeping the hands there, and then come to a nice half pyramid pose. The front leg in this one is trying to straighten as much as it can. Try to pull the right hip forward just a little bit. That helps keep the hips square. Rotate on the heels. The, toy, the toes point to the right end of the mat. The wide angle forward. Hold at least halfway. Take the toes back forward. Take a bend to both knees. Roll the spine up. And we're resetting the fabric. So slide the hands wide. Fabric comes behind the shoulder blades. Hook it up underneath. And then start to put some weight in it so it holds it as we switch off. So it's like as wide of a stance as we can get the feet. The front knees bent. The back leg's trying to straighten. Maybe the hands slide up. That keeps our spine in a slight back bend shape. stretch for the left hip now. Good. Back foot slides forward to the point where the heel can be flat on the floor. Readjust the grip forward. And a pyramid pose. So note the natural inclination is to Pull the left hip back. So that would be kind of facing the hips to the back door. So instead, pull the left hip forward so the hips are square forward. Straighten the front leg. One way to think about that is lifting up the kneecap a little bit. That engages the quad. The quad is the opposite side of the hamstring. So if the quad 
contracts, that helps the hamstring stretch. Wide angle, turn the toes to the left. You adjust the hands a little. The arms can be straight or bent by the way. So bent, let's your heart droop down just a little bit. Straight arms is more about the shoulder stretch. Toes turn back forward, then the knees roll the head up, slide the grip out again, readjusting under shoulder blades one more time. And as you take your weight into that, drop both knees to the floor. So you should be kind of under plumb line, not too far forward or back there. So arms open out, push the hips forward, lift the chin up. The head starts to rise slowly back the hips backwards. Good. Readjust the arms completely out and then fabric in front, hands in prayer position. We'll take a child pose with the hands inside. so that if I were to separate, it would be about as wide as shoulders, but it's, um, yeah, just a little bit up like this. So we'll take a little sequence. We'll do it three times. First extended fish. We lean back. We start to feel the quad stretching. We lift the hips up into the double quad stretch, little back bend, and then arm strength to pull us slowly up through camel. Once we're up, extend the arms forward, puppy. Group the heart down. And then puppy into child. The hips come back to the feet. Good. So nice and slow. Roll the spine back to extended fish. Lift the hips up. Arm strength to pull up their camel. Forward to puppy. And back to child. One more time. Extended fish. Camel. Puppy. And all the way back to child. But as we straighten the spine back up, get the feet to plant in front of us. Take a little bit of a full back bend, a full wheel pose. And then arm strength to pull up to stand. Beautiful. Once you're standing, release. The clasping fingers together. Flipping the palms out. <laughs> yeah, give your head a moment. <laughs> Don't be. <laughs> you need to stand against the wall, that's fine. <laughs> okay, so from flipping the hands out, Bring your left hand a little closer to you so that stretches the, the right wrist. Good, and then switch it out. Right hand is a little closer. Good, now flip it the other way. And then same thing, left hand pulls closer. Right hand pulls. Beautiful. Release. Roll the wrist out a couple of times. Let's go to a hip hang from here. Playing first with um, a standing split, and then we'll be going to the full hip hang. 
So bunch up the fabric like a, it brings, you bring it in like a belt to the hips. So tippy toes if you need to, to get it on the bones, not the guts. Come forward to take all the slack out. As you bend at the waist, drop the hands down and then walk backwards three steps into downward facing dog. So this is that massage for the hips that we were talking about before. If this is intense, just stay on the down dog. You don't have to go further. If you're okay, we'll take it to standing split. So right leg kicks wide to remind us to catch the outside of the fabric. Right foot grabs the fabric, presses around. And then you'll try to extend that leg up as much as you can. In the right leg. Bend it. Whoa. Drop the toes. And then return this one back down. If this one can slide up, that's okay. But if not, let's don't worry about it. And let's try to go two or three more breaths on this first side if you can. And let's start to bend the right knee. Gentle release of the toes and then foot back to floor. Second side, kick the left leg wide and then wrap the toes. Once the toes are wrapped, try to slide the leg up if there's any more space. The most important part though is the right foot tries to stay downward. So you wrapped it on the inside, wrap it on the outside. You went for the variation where you're grabbing for the bottom foot before you can do that again. One inhale, one exhale. Hands return if they released. And then if you'd like the hip hang, that's fine. Just hug around the shins in a tiny little ball. If that's too much for hips, you return back to down dog. Or if the head needs to come up at any point, you can slowly roll the head up into and come into stargazer. So it's essentially giving the hip flexors that massage for as long as they can handle it. Just slow, deep breathing. No rush to come out. If you're coming out, bring the feet to plant and then slowly roll the head up. <laughs> Fabric comes underneath the shoulder blades again. You just get a chance to lean back while you give your head some. I personally love bending the right knee, <laughs> leaning over to the right. Bending the left knee, leaning to the left. Just an easy cycle each side. here with the fabric under the shoulder blades we're walking our hips forward or our feet forward to a full chair pose our right leg is going to kick up then we try to grab onto it a moment for hamstring stretch yep thigh is fine good now right ankle to left thigh release all core activation just dropping the weight of the hips down maybe even the knee rotates over Straightening the left leg, plant the right foot to the left. Then the, the right arm opens, gaze over the right shoulder. Beautiful. Slight bend to both knees to return to chair. 
left leg kicks up, try to grab onto it. Figure four, release the weight of the core down. Straightening right leg, plant the left foot to the right. Left arm opens, we try to turn the chest open. Knees over left hand. To both feet planted forward, walk yourself backwards to free out. Fabric is in front. So from here, right, um, right side comes all the way inside. We hop directly up for underneath the plumb line. Hands slide up nice and high. We sink our weight forward, warrior one. This one can be a bit of that massage under the hamstrings. If it's too intense, spread out the surface area over the whole thigh. But if you can try to breathe into it, let that massage happen. Good. Grabbing onto left side, turn open for warrior two. The front arm can reach forward if you feel good. Left arm can reach back like warrior two arms. You want to just grab onto the fabric the whole time, that's also fine. Front thigh is continuing to slide forward if you've got space for it. Let's return to the fabric in front of you. Squeezing our thighs together. We're standing on the left foot. Slide the fabric to the right ankle. Hips are still open to back. Good. So on this left strand of fabric, left hand slides up, right hand slides down. It's open shoulders like a triangle pose, maybe sinking weight forward like a side slit. Exhale, weight comes forward. Put one hand on each side. Uh, turn your, your standing toes forward and split. Okay. Weight back over the standing legs, slide fabric to the foot. This is gonna be that foot massage that I promised, tree pose. So slide the hands up. The front knee is bent. We're gonna come up to stand inside of that knee, that foot. So stand up. The left foot is behind, and then it wraps around for trees. So wrap all the way around the fabric, that's it. And then come up to the thigh like a tree pose. Good. So once, so up to the thigh. The, the inner thigh, the inner thigh of your leg, there you go. And then your left arm comes forward up the fabric. I know it feels funky. Know, it feels, it feels super funky, yeah. Just get your wrist and then your elbow, yep. And then once you're there, you're safe, you're locked in, your hands so this one, like I said, is that foot massage. So if it gets too intense, you need to drop down. That's okay. Otherwise, try to breathe into it. Our inhale. Exhale. Grab right hand on for safety. And then left hand grabs on as soon as it can as you bring the shoulder behind again. So this left leg, unwind it and then bring it forward through the center. We're gripping on tight. The right foot is gonna flip and then we lower ourselves in front of the fabric. 
So left foot to floor, right foot does that flip. That's it. Good job. Okay, and then stand on the floor all the way in front. Good. So readjust your armpits are free, and then you grab a thumbs down grip over each shoulder. Good. Quad stretch. So just lean backwards into the fabric. Just rest your shoulders backwards. You can feel the, the front of the thigh stretching on that right leg. Weight over standing leg. Dancer's pose. Make sure the elbows are pointed forward. Lean forward and then kick the foot into the fabric that creates the lift. Beautiful. Come back up. Find your balance. As you feel you're safe to do so, drop hands all the way to the floor. Straighten both legs. And if you have more space, try to walk the hands backwards for your deeper splits. If you're touching the wall, your front foot can hop forward and then go back. So I'm trying to think of my hands going behind where my heel, my front heel is. It's like a tripod effect that feels more balanced. Good. And we'll readjust from here into a pigeon pose. So plant the hands back up at the top of the mat. This left knee comes down in pigeon pose shape. Lower to elbows, sink the hips back. Stay in the pigeon, or if you'd like a moment of core before the second side, stay with the elbows down like an elbow plate. And then you'll step your left foot into the fabric. Rather than drooping down, you're trying to engage the core, being at least flat or slightly hunky up. Everybody lowers both knees to floor. The spine to stack, grab onto the fabric, use that grip to just simply help us rise up. Second side, left thigh in. We come right up to the plumb line. So directly under the metal pieces, so hop forward a little good, hands up. And warrior one. Try to relax the right front of hip into the stretch. Maybe even the back heel drooping down gets into a nice calf stretch. And both hands to the right side. Rotate the standing toes to the left, uh, to the right. <laughs> Warrior one, or oh, sorry, two. My brain is not working right at this moment. Where are your two? Open up. Your thighs relaxing forward at their space. Try to relax into that hamstring massage. Good. And then hands return. Weight comes over the standing in the center. Slip fabric to the ankle. And then Triangle, so grab onto the right half, right hand up, left hand down. Maybe sink some weight forward, but you don't have to. Just keep the chest nice and open. Good. Weight back over the center. Grab one hand on each side, face forward. Splits. Sinking some weight directly forward. Good. 
and come back to the center. Slide the foot to stand. The knees really bent. Rip up high. Slow control to rise. Wrap the right leg around the right side from behind. So bring it back to where it was. The foot comes to wrap all the way around. That's good. And do it like a tree pose so the foot is on your inner foot. And right elbow forward and hands at heart. No, just the right elbow. Yeah, you just want one side because then the hands can come to the heart. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. You're like, I found a tender side. <laughs> that's okay. You know where we're going if you want to go there early. More breaths. One more inhale. Exhale. Left hand for safety. Right hand grabs on as soon as it can. Unwind the right leg, it's through the center. Grip. The left foot does the flip. We stand on the right. Awesome. That's okay, that counts. <laughs> okay, so free out your armpits, thumbs down, grip over your shoulders. But then we just lean our weight backwards. Quad stretch. Okay, standing back up. Dancer, point the elbows forward, shoulders are engaged. Lean forward, kick the foot into the fabric. Come back up. Find your balance until you can drop hands to the floor. Splits. If the foot needs to hop forward a little before you go back, that's fine. Try to get the hands to walk behind where that front heel is for the tripod balance. Good. And it doesn't seem like it would be steady, but it feels so much more steady if you have tripod shape. Okay, and planting hands at the top of the mat, pigeon pose, rest the knee down, or to elbows. The optional elbow plank on this side. Step the foot in, otherwise, just enjoy this pigeon a little longer. More inhale, exhale, work the knees down. Up to stand. And straddle back inversion. Those that know it, go right ahead into it. We'll go step by step. So slide your thumbs in. The goal is to push down. We're keeping the fabric like right on the sacrum, so kind of right above the back, butt crack area. You don't want it too high, so yeah, if you need to go to tippy toes and walk forward a little bit to, to make it easier to keep it there, good. So we're right there. It's, it's almost a little high for you right now. So a little lower of where you're at, yep. Keep it right there. So your palms are engaged, engaged pushing it there. One foot steps back. Bending your knees. You're starting to put some of your weight directly into the hips. Good, keep your core tight. You're tiptoeing forward under palm line so you don't swing. Good, that's like three steps, yep. And then as the hands come up, the knees go wide. You have to kind of keep, I know it's a core thing for sure. So it's like you put so much weight. 
Good, good, good. Keep it there. Tiptoe forward a little bit. Yep. Now, it's, it's kind of simultaneous. Hands up a little higher. Knees wide a little. Nope. So your, your knees are on the inside. Bring them to the outside. Yep. And then your feet wrap all the way around. As soon as your feet are up, your hands are free to release all the way down. I know, because you're gone. <laughs> but you're safe. Know. If you trust it, you're safe, but you don't have to if you don't trust it. Any other stretches? You got it. You just let me know when you want to come back up, and I'll guide you through it. But for now, just try to let your spine relax down. So it's, it's like decompression for the spine. <laughs> Do kind of like a crunch to grip, grip your hands back up by the fabric by the knees. Yep. Grab right there. And then as you kind of walk your hands a little higher, your feet will start to unwind. Yeah, so, so untuck your feet. Yep. And then you're slowly walking your hands up. Rather than slamming your feet down the floor, just slowly tilt yourself the other way. You can slowly start to come down, use the core. Oh, we got it. Just leave that sound with your head. So this is heading into our last segment of class. If you want to hang upside down or do last little movement stretches for your body before we wrap up, go right ahead. You have that freedom. At any point when you're ready for a Shavasana, this is about that time we would head into it. Some days people want to just lay on the floor for Shavasana. They've been up long enough. If you want to head back inside for Shavasana, you'll do the same steps we did to get into it. Grab the front, wave it out. Just grab about half of it before you come in. So either way, laying down, finding that beautiful final shavasana shape sooner or later. Imagine this is a gift for yourself. Self love, self care. You were the center of the universe. Taking moments like this for yourself makes it so that 
as you head out to the rest of everything, you can do it with much more kindness, much more compassion, empathy, much more grace. Imagining we are the goddess. And sometimes treating ourselves like few more minutes just to relax here. Keep the breath flowing deep and warm. to deep inhales, deep in exhales, introduce little movements back to fingers and toes, ankles and wrists, stretch out in ways that feel really good right now, maybe the arms go to the back wall, some of the stretches that we started class off with. Or maybe you want a fetal position today. The body's long, but you can roll onto one hip. And then from there, you can curl into a tight roll and arch back. Take a minute or so, just slowly returning back to motion, back to breath. Another breath or two, 
Eventually you rise up to a comfortable seated place. The heart will reconnect with our intention. Thinking of this kind of pre-Valentine's Day as being all about us. What do we need? to be able to function healthy, to be able to be more kind in our relationships, to be able to listen a little bit better, communicate a little bit better. And with this beautiful, deep self-care, self-love to lead us on, let's wrap up the time we shared together with the sound of OM. Deep inhale now. Oh. May we be filled with life, happiness, and peace. Namaste. Thank you.